Hello friends, welcome to Physiodemic channel. Today in this video we will discuss about the cervical spondylosis. Okay, first we will see about the definitions of the cervical spondylosis. So it is a very, uh, it is a term that contains a wide range of progressive degenerative changes which affects almost all the component of the cervical spine like all the bony components as well as the soft tissue components and uh, it's a natural process of aging and mainly it's affects in the people of fifth decades okay and uh, the chronic uh, degenerative process first affect the intervertebral discs then the facial joint which leads to the disc herniation and osteophyte formation okay and also uh, in uh, the spinal body degeneration and which lead to the compression of the cord spinal cord and uh, leads to the uh, myelopathy compressive myelopathy of the cervical spine okay then we will discuss about the etiology yes. so the uh, first is etiology the age related degeneration of intervertebral discs and spinal element and the whole process result in, in three different uh, syndrome that is called as axial pain, cervical myelopathy and cervical radiculopathy. So factor like also trauma and specific athletic activity, congenital narrowing of the canal leads to early onset of cervical spondylosis and accelerated disease process. Then we will see about the uh, clinical features. So clinical features, I have already told that it is the disease process has been divided into three uh, categories like axial pain. So in axial pain, the patient complains stiffness and pain in cervical spine, uh, which is uh, increases in upright positions and relieved with bed rest. Okay, and uh, also the pain uh, increases in hyperextension and side side bending, and to the affected side and also pain sometime patient may complain radiating pain towards the occiput and trapezius area and pericapsular periscapular area okay the second condition is this is the image which is showing the pain presentation of the pain on the back posterior part of the neck area and the uh, interscapular area of the uh, uh, body okay the second then cervical radiculopathy uh, so radicular pain follow the mitomal distribution basically depend on the nerve root involved okay upper uh, limb and uh, uh, unilateral it may be uh, radiate to the unilateral side or bilateral side and uh, and also patient complain the arm pain scapular pain paresthesia and then uh, weakness of the arm and hand involved side arm and hand then pain aggravated by the uh, side flexion and hyperextension of the cervical spine this is the image which is uh, showing radicular pain patterns from the cervical area to the till to the finger of the uh, patient then then the cervical myelopathy okay and uh, it is a in uh, cervical myelopathy has an insidious onset and uh, it is with or without neck pain okay uh, firstly, patients complain the weakness and clumsiness of the hand. Then uh, uh, complain difficulty in doing fine motor activity of the hand like buttonings or pincher, pincher grabs or holding some objects. Uh, then uh, and also patient frequently complains about the gait instability and uh, fall. And sometimes in, in some, some patients urinary incontinence is seen. This is the image which is showing uh, compressive myelopathy at the cervical uh, canal area. Here the intervertebral disc is bulging towards the spinal canal and compressing the spinal canal. So now we will discuss about the differential diagnosis. So varieties of other conditions like cervical strain, strain, cervical myofascial pain, cervical disc disease, cervical fracture, fibromyalgia and brachial plexopathy, thoracic outlet syndrome, multiple sclerosis amyloidropic lateral sclerosis, vertebral metastasis and osteomyelitis and these are the conditions which almost present same symptoms and signs okay the neck pains and radiculopathy and so, some in some condition also cervical myelopathy now we will discuss about the medical management so varieties of drugs are used to treat the cervical spondylosis case so uh, 
So the drugs are like NSAID, non-steroidal, anti-inflammatory drugs, oral steroid, muscle relaxant, anti-convulsion, anti-depressions. Okay, these are the drugs used to reduce the pain, pain of the patients. Okay, then also um, short-term use of the cervical collars and uh, in night times use of cervical pillow is also recommended to the patient. And if these all this pharmacological therapy does not work, then patient is recommended to go for epidural steroid injection, facet joint injection, and medial branch block treatment. Okay, then we'll see about the surgical treatment. In surgical treatment, basically the uh, decompression decompression of the compressed neural element is done, and this decompression is done with the two approaches: anterior approaches and posterior approaches. And sometimes also decompression is done with the combined with the arthrodesis of the facial joint. So in decompression, there are two types of uh, operations are done. Basically, the foraminotomy and discectomy. And this is the image which is showing the foraminotomy. Okay, here the pinched knob has been uh, uh, decompressed uh, by widening the foraminal interspinous foraminal area. Okay. Okay, then we'll discuss about the physiotherapy management. So in physiotherapy management, so as we know the different structure of the neck is affected due to the cervical spondylosis and basically the disc herniation leads to the muscle spasm and joint stiffness of particular that involved area. So to address the uh, affected muscle, soft tissue therapy is given. In soft tissue therapy, varieties of techniques is used like ischemic compression, dry needling, myofascial release, sustained myofascial pressure, and uh, instrument assisted soft tissue release, and also dry coping therapy is used. So, uh, in, then to address the joint stiffness, manual therapy is used. In manual therapy, we know that McKenzie concept is there, then uh, Metlin concept is there, then uh, Mulligan concept is there. So, among three of these uh, concepts, and uh, already we have discussed in uh, our previous video in neck pain that what are the different techniques in mobilization is used in neck pain. Okay, then uh, the motor control training uh, is given. Like this type of means if patient with cervical spondylosis basically uh, presents with reduced strength of the uh, deep neck neck flexion and the overactivity of the. Uh, superficial neck muscles so firstly patient should be taught how to activate the deep neck neck flexor muscles okay and without using the superficial neck muscle then the stretching exercise is given to the patient so we have to stretch the patient we have to taught the patient how to stretch the tight muscles around the neck area basically i have told all the muscles get affected due to this for cervical spondylosis okay then the electrotherapy modality is used to reduce the pain and spasm and also sometimes to reduce the inflammation process like TENS and yeah, interferential therapy, ultrasound therapy and traction is also used to reduce the pain, spasm, inflammation and okay then neural tissue mobilization techniques is used. Neural tissue mobilization technique here we have to evaluate which, which nerve is affected okay like medial nerve or ulnar nerve or radial nerve then different uh, techniques are there uh, are there like slider and tensioner which we can use for respective one nerve okay affected nerve then we have to teach the postural training and stress management to the patient for postural training we have to teach the patient how to sit properly while in uh, office or in working area then uh, how to maintain the proper posture if patient will only be able to maintain it properly then we have to hold that position particular that uh, means corrected position by giving tapping okay static tapping techniques in the interscapular area also and for stress management we have to teach the patient to do breathing exercise yoga or meditation okay this is the image which is showing my official release technique over the interscapular area okay this is the image where it's uh, where the mobilization technique has been has been shown okay the metal and mobilization technique this is the image which is showing the dnf activation exercises here the patient is in uh, supine lying position then patient has to do nodding movement okay without lifting the head from the couch 
okay then this is the technique of tapping technique okay to maintain a static uh, normal uh, posture okay how to hold a corrected posture and this is the tapping okay then we'll discuss about the evidence based practice so in evidence based practice many research has been done okay has been conducted to know the effects of different uh, physiotherapeutic management on uh, cervical spondylosis so very few number of studies shows the limited evidence, limited evidence are there so benefits of mobilization and manipulation so almost no evidence exists for efficacy of uh, non sterile anti inflammatory drugs and analgesic and very less evidence are there uh, uh, are there for the benefits of home exercise program so in chronic cases many research, uh, many research paper are there for chronic cases so uh, one uh, randomized control trial by systemic review provides moderate evidence of various exercises like proprioceptive exercises strengthening exercises coordination and endurance exercise and which are more effective than nsaid and analgesic okay so one more study so the like rct so that exercise and uh, and infrared is no more effective than tens and heat to reduce the pain and some studies uh, some study also provides limited evidence that mobilization and manipulation are more effective than pharmacological therapy education and counseling and one more comparative study show that the uh, com combination of exercise and the manipulation is manipulation and mobilization is more effective than individual uh, techniques like only exercises or only uh, manual therapy uh, one systemic review of uh, also randomized control trial uh, provide no evidence about the effectiveness of acupuncture or traction compared with the other physiotherapeutic techniques okay so in uh, uh, in cervical spondylosis with the neurological abnormality patients a uh, study shows like comparative study shows like that epidural injection is slightly more effective than placebo treatment and one more randomized control trial shows also surgical intervention effective to reduce the pain for the first few months on long term basis and there is no difference after the uh, after one year okay like after a particular period of time uh, we, if you will compare with the other three groups of treatment like injection immobilization and exercises okay so these were all about the uh, um, cervical spondylosis so first you have to go through basically for the students you have to go through your own book prepare your own, own note which you can uh, refer later during your examination time so you have to prepare your own note by referring your own book also so thank you so much stay tuned to this channel for further videos